please put your hands together and please help me welcome Billy Torres. <laughs> Pressure is first off. <laughs> Do the first thing first and see if I can operate it and turn it on the way. Okay. Okay, so um, good morning, everyone. Um, very privileged to have been asked to come on stage and, and share with you some of my highlights from the, the 12 months on, on Mastermind. For me, a, a key date in my journey was on the 2nd of um, January 2015 last year. I found myself, I was in the lounge at Manchester Airport, and I was kind of reflecting on where my life was at that time, and 2014 hadn't been the best year for me. I'd had a marriage had broken down, I'd kind of come out of a divorce, but on January the 1st, I had to drop Archie off at his, his mum's house, and I wasn't sure when I would be back from Dubai to see him next, whether it would be in January, whether it would be in February. Also, my dad had been down, and he'd been back up to Aberdeen, so it was kind of a case of just where was my life going? And I was kind of aware I was about to get on a flight to travel 6,000 kilometers to go to the other part of um, you know, the Middle East to do a job that I'd ultimately fallen out of love with. It was no longer my motivation. It was no longer the kind of the fire in, in, in my belly. And what I realized was at that time I had kind of started trading time for, for money. And that's a bit of a stupid trade to do because the one thing in life that we can't get any more of is, is, is time. And I kind of realized I'd fallen into that trap in the corporate world. Okay, um, I don't think it'll come to a surprise to a lot of you that property is actually quite a strong passion of mine. You know, so Mastermind was, was quite lucky for me and that it really gave me two different outcomes. You know, one was um, I wanted to move from the corporate world to being full-time in property. Um, but two, I wanted property to give me that option to have time away to do things with family, to do stuff personally. Um, so I really saw it giving me two bites of, of the cherry. Um, I've been in property for a long time, since 2002. You know, I bought my first house in, in Ireland. It's a garden apartment in, in, in that block there. And between 2002, 2015, I bought up a portfolio of about 10 houses, seven that were mine, three with a joint venture partner, Peter. But it was a mixed portfolio. You know, I had some stock that was underwater in Bulgaria, in um, Ireland as well. I had some low yielding stock in the outskirts of um, Liverpool too. So it didn't give me enough money that would allow me to make the move from the corporate world to being a property investor, which, which is really what I wanted to do. In, in January, um, I read a number of articles in YPN and there was a key theme that came out in, in those was that at each point certain people who'd built up portfolios had taken a step back to invest in themselves to go the extra mile. So I kind of thought maybe that's what I should do. You know, what I didn't want to do was wait another 12 years um, to hit my target. And the reality was I knew with my current portfolio that if I could get this in one year, I could make the move from the corporate world to get my time back as, as, as Billy. Um, so kind of lo long story short, in January, I looked at a lot of different courses and a lot of different programs out there. And, and Mastermind appealed to me, mainly because I saw it as like a master's in, in business or, or a PhD in, in, in business. But I was still concerned, you know, it was, um, I had a you know, senior job with, with a good consulting company. I had the portfolio on the side. I was trying to be a dad and I was 8,000 kilometers or 6,000 kilometers away. And kind of the question was, could I really do this or would it just be more stress that, that I was putting on myself? So anyway, I, I had a conversation with this Zootsy character on January the 24th to ask him what his views were. You know, should I come on Mastermind 19 or should I maybe wait till Mastermind um, what, one in 2016? And, and the um, advice following that conversation was to come to the accelerator that was the next month and then to make the decision whether I was gonna join Mastermind 19 or whether I was gonna wait 12 months till, till I was back in the UK. The reality is though, after that call with Simon, I made the decision that I was gonna commit to doing Mastermind 19. And, and the reason for that was I was no longer prepared to trade my time for, for money for another 12 months. And that really helped me because it meant, to be honest, by the time I came here in March, my kind of mindset was, was really good 
And you know, from talking to some of the previous top five people, from watching all the previous top five videos, the same thing is said up here each time on the, on the stage. If you actually go deep into that and follow the process, a bit like what Fraser said earlier today, it can really help you. And, and that really got me to, to hitting the ground quickly when I came. Okay, so what, what have we actually done in Mastermind 19? Well, it's certainly been a busy 12 months. A um, couple of different strategies that, that I've done. You know, short-term letting was, was key to me. I did a lot of refurb that I needed to get cash flow quickly. So I've, I've rented stuff in Dubai. I've rented stuff short-term in Bulgaria and also in Liverpool. When I was looking at the kind of the numbers for this presentation, it's about 100 short-term lets we've done in the last 12 months, so almost two, 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 two a week. Got involved in sourcing for the first time. So, you know, going through that famous um, process flow we were given, you know, deals that don't fit your um, strategy, look to, to trade them on, look to sell them on. Created two companies, you know, I never thought that would happen. I've got a development company, I've now got a buy to hold company, and, and I'll share some details with, with you about that later on as well. I knew what lease options were before Mastermind. I never knew how to execute them. I never knew how to source them. I've done lease option deals in Liverpool and, and Redditch and, and Pontypree. Um, helped some people in, in Bulgaria who were struggling to rent their summer apartment. So basically did a rent to rent, a, a kind of letting deal with them. Bridging one of the, the webinars we had, Simon talked about if you can borrow money, which I could do cheap in Dubai from the bank, I could keep half of that money for my refurb and I could spin the other half on to, to other investors and, and claim on, on, on that and basically it ends up being free money for you. Um, done rent to rents again in, in Dubai, also with masterminders in London. Set up a SaaS pension scheme. You know, again, that was from MMX. That's great because that can manage your tax going forward, but also yeah. enables you to um, basically create a, a vehicle where if you want to do bridging long term, w which I do, it's very tax effective to do it. So I was doing a lot of stuff. That also meant that I got a bit of coverage. So um, I got some, uh, asked to write an, inter an, an article for YPN magazine about investing from overseas. Did an, an interview with Michael Stenhouse and did a couple of webinars with, with Simon too. The reality was though, um, a lot of those activities I were do was doing was to create cash flow for what was my two main strategies. And the two main strategies was student lets in terms of um, adding new HMOs to, to that. And we put on about 10 houses in total with 50 new rooms coming online 1st of July. And then also focusing on the bigger deals. So the bigger deals to give us the chunk of, of, of money, um, which was conversion of four um, office blocks to, to 20 apartments. So there's about 45 deals done since the time I, I spoke to Simon. And if you think of between 2002 to 2012, um, no, sorry, to 2014, it taken me that long to just get 10 properties. Um, so from my perspective, going from that to that really shows me what being in this environment and um, committing yourself to a, a program like this can do for you. We'll go into some of the individual deals now um, and, and touch base on them. So this is one of the student houses. And I, I love student houses um, because of the cash flow they, they, they give you. You know, if you, lo you look at this deal, the profit's just over 10K. If you do that every year, you only need probably three or four of them to get kind of close to, to, to that target. But how do they give you so, such good cash flow is really through momentum investing. And when you're doing momentum investing with these deals, we're doing two things. You know, we're doing big refurbs to them. We're adding additional rooms, so we're going up to the attic. We're going out the back as well and doing large, large extensions. So we're going from two bedrooms to six bedroom houses. Um, but the other opportunity you have for momentum investing is at the price that you buy. And the reality was before Mastermind, I'd spent all my time going against other investors. So being in auction rooms, being on, on, on right move um, against other people. It wasn't until I realized I should be looking for the seller rather than the house that we managed to be able to scale up a lot quicker. And a lot of my deals this year have been off market. You know, stuff that has been sourced through landlord letters, through Facebook, through LinkedIn, through um, Gumtree. And what's really good when you get the stuff off market, particularly if they're a motivated seller you or a tired landlord, you find a lot of the time they've actually got multiple properties. So again, you're getting no competition when you're in there, but you've also then got the, cha the opportunity to kind of scale up a lot quicker. Finally, what I really like about this model is my time is spent sourcing the deal and financing the deal. 
the whole process then of actually refurbing it, the furniture, the architect, the letting of it, is the same house from house. So it's a really good model to, to rinse and, and, and repeat, and as I say, can give you great cash flow as well. The second deal I want to talk to you a little bit about is, is Hamilton Square, and I'm pretty sure this won't come as a surprise to you um, being up, up, up here. You know, Hamilton Square was the conversion of four um, office blocks into 22 bedroom apartments. What I loved about this deal was the amount of different touch points that it actually had. And when I went into doing the deal, you know, I went into it to push myself to the next level. I went into it to make some, some cash. What I didn't realize was though how um, much I would enjoy the, the different touch points. You know, ultimately we've got um, you know, 20 investors now who are gonna own each of these, these apartments and that'll give them a return for, for as long as they hold them, can be kept for their kids, et cetera. We're gonna have 20 tenants who are gonna be in brand new apartments and in a great grade one listed building. We've got investors um, from Crowd Property who can invest from as little as 500 pounds getting a, a return on that. Our refurb costs for that were 600K. So, you know, we've put um, work in terms of 600K into um, construction companies in the, in the northwest of England. And that's something I'm hugely proud of and I, and I really never thought um, would do um, during Mastermind. The other big thing w with that is that it, it takes responsibilities. You know, when, you, when you've got builders to pay, when you've got bridgers to pay, when you've got crowd properties to pay, when you've got the buyers to, to pay. So you really need to manage your cash flow tight on, on deals like this. And again, that's a skill I've managed to develop as a, as a result of um, Mastermind. And, and with Hamilton Square, what I'm really pleased to say is, is this week we issued our first um, notice to complete on the first 10 apartments. And next week we should be issuing notices to complete on the final 10 apartments. So what that basically means is that during the period of Mastermind, you know, we've gone out, we've managed to source a deal, we've managed to fund it, we've managed to build it, we've managed to sell out 20 apartments. Um, and, and when I spoke to Simon in January um, last year, you know, my next house purchase was a 40,000 pound terrace house that was a cannabis factory. And we turned it into a great student house. We took out the cannabis, um, <laughs> but you know, that, that's where I thought my future was. That's what I was doing, standard terrace, buy to let houses. Never did I dream I would go from doing that 12 months ago to doing this in, in the last six months. And again, that's really the power of being in this environment and the power of this group to, to do stuff like that. Okay, um, the, the figures, um, yep, it's certainly been a good year. Um, totally surpassed anything that I thought that, that, that would do. You know, managed to put on about four million of assets in the, during the mastermind core. In terms of the actual profit before joint ventures are paid out, we're at 470,000. My share of that um, post joint venture funding will be about 265,000, you know. Um, that's a hell of a lot of money. You don't need that money to live off a year. You need half of that, you need, you need a quarter of it. But I'm now in the position, thankfully, to mastermind and thankfully to the investment I've made this year that I now have a choice what I want to do. You know, a lot of that, the good stuff about that as well is your um, annuity business stays with you. You know, so your student houses, your lease options, that stays with you um, year on year. In terms of advice, I really look at it as kind of two main components. You know, you have your mindset perspective and then you have the property um, perspective. And the important thing I would say to anyone is to get your mindset right. And that, you know, in the first month Simon says that it's, it's not about property and, and he's correct. You know, if you can get this bit right and you can get your focus, the property stuff will take care of itself, you know. And when you look at the property stuff, all the strategies work, whether you want to do flips, whether you want to do HMOs, whether you want to do conversions, they work. Get something that's close to, you, to your heart, close to your values and focus on it. And then what Simon said this morning is keep it simple. Too many times I think we complicate stuff. To do any of these deals, you have to source the property and then you have to fund it. And you have to do it in, in that order. Again, before Mastermind, I actually thought money had the highest power, but um, I realized without a doubt it's, it's actually sourcing. And if you look at Hamilton Square, that's a good example of that. You know, Hamilton Square, I had funds li lined up from a bridger, then Crowd Property underwrote it, and then they opened it to the crowd. So it was funded three times, you know? So there's, you know, th there's enough money out there to fund deals. 
what's actually harder is, is getting some of the deals to, to, together. All the other stuff then, your refurbishments, your technical stuff, you know, pay people for it, outsource it. But the stuff that will give you the strategic advantage is sourcing stuff and funding it. It's a really simple business once you just kind of follow it. And then finally, you accept it's a journey. You know, it's kind of, there isn't a straight line. And, and one of the things I've got better of as a result of Mastermind is actually being aware of that journey and realizing there's different curves a, a, around the corner and enjoying it. Okay, I'm kind of weary now. I'm, I'm running out of time. Dave put up his, his card. But, you know, what, one of the key things is to do this, you know, the, the whole principle of Mastermind is that one plus one is greater than two. Um, and I never knew that again before I came here. I thought it was a case of you just work hard, you, you put your head down, th that's your end result. The reality is linking into a group like this, linking into an environment will help everyone to, to, to move. And I'd really like to thank each one of you individually for making the last 12 months such a, a great year for myself. Um, there's a lot of other people up there I, I kind of like to, 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 to thank, you know, kind of Simon. Fraser, a number of other people in kind of the peripherals of, of Mastermind, my coach Rob McFarn, Mark Deering, Michael Dong, Joe Simpson, Andy Gwynn, all who helped me um, in terms of, of getting a, a clear steer on, on where I was going. Um, and then also, you know, the, the guys back in Liverpool have ultimately delivered a lot of this, this, this stuff. And finally, you know, our tenants and, and also our investors and our house buyers. If you don't have them, this kind of beautiful um, world of property doesn't necessarily work. So then finally, you know, wh where are we? We're now um, you know, 12, 13 months on from that time when I was sitting in that lounge in Manchester Airport, you know, worrying about trading my, my time for money. Um, I'm glad to say you know, I, I am going back to Dubai next week, but I'm going back to Dubai for a two week holiday and I'm going back to Dubai to pack up my stuff and move back to the, the UK um, kind of lock, stock and barrel. What, what that gives me is my time back. And, and that's what this year was really about for me, it was about getting my time back because I just didn't have it. And, and, and that allows me to be a dad. It allows me to see my son every month, something you can't do from 6,000 kilometers away. It allows me to do stuff that, you know, I'm not a materialistic person. I don't, I don't have a Posh watch, I, I don't have a flash car, but what I do do, do I, you know, I enjoy experiences, whether that be sporting events, whether that would be um, time out with family, you know, et cetera. And now I've got my time back and, and that's all I really wanted. Um, you know, I'm quite bullish about where the property will go, but I'm actually gonna reflect on that for some time over the next couple of months before moving to the next level. And then finally, you know, I'm really glad I've tapped into the self-development circle. I don't know what I've been doing to be honest, but for the last 15, 16 years, it wasn't since I really tapped into this that I realized how far you can push yourself and what you can actually deliver if, if you put your mind to it. And um, I'd just like to put a, a big thank you to each of you for, for helping this to happen and, and make it such a good year. Thanks. <laughs>